Okay, so we can show systematically now, not only, it's not just a metaphor to say that children are little scientists, we can actually show the kinds of statistical analyses, the kinds of experiments that children are doing, and show the way that those kinds of statistical analyses and experiments are actually letting them learn as much as they do about how the world around them works. We even know a little bit about what's happening in children's brains that's allowing this, uh, uh, all this learning to take place. And I'm just going to mention this very briefly. We know that when children are very young, they're making millions and millions of connections, that their brains are connecting more or more active than there ever will be later on. And gradually, what happens is that they're exuberant connecting early on. And gradually, what happens is that as children get older, they prune off some of those connections. And that may sound like it's so, in other words, they cut some of the connections. Um, and all during development, especially during early development, there's this kind of balance between a brain that's making many, many, many connections, many more than it will eventually use, and then it's strengthening some of those connections and cutting some of those connections, making some of those other connections weaker. And we have good evidence that it's actually the child's experience of the world that leads some connections to be, to be strengthened and other connections to be cut. It may sound like it's a loss to be pruning all those neural connections, but actually it isn't. By pruning the connections and strengthening others, you end up with this kind of lean, mean learning machine that we have as adults, where we're really, really good at doing the things that we've done many, many, many times. Um, and we're really bad at trying to learn something that we've never done before at all. Um, what you can, the way of really thinking about development is that development is a process by which children are changing from a system that's incredibly flexible and very, very good at learning and not very good at doing anything in particular to a system like us that's really, really good at doing things in particular but not so good at being flexible and learning. That seems to be what's happening in the children's brains and what's happening in the children's minds as well. Um, so pruning actually has both disadvantages and advantages. It lets you focus better. It lets you do things swiftly and efficiently better. But it means that you lose some of that early flexibility. Um, and we know that experience is the thing that's actually causing those connections to change. I think I'll just skip over this since we're going a little late. OK, last thing. What does all this tell us about what to do? What does all this tell us about what you librarians should be doing? What does it tell us about what we should be doing as a society in general to try to help children to learn? Well, I think there's actually two messages. One of them is about what not to do. Um, and what not to do is to spend the billions of dollars that we actually do spend in our society on flashcards and videos and, and various kinds of enrichments that are supposed to make the children smarter. I think it's also important to say that something not to do is to try to put children in school when they're babies and young children. Um, so it's very important for children to learn how to do the kinds of things that we do in school. But those aren't the things that children are learning in this very early period. And the things that they are learning, like learning about other people's minds, learning how the sounds of language work, learning about the causal structure of the world around them, are really, really, really important things to learn. And those are not things that they're learning from the videos and flashcards and electronic games and enrichments and all the rest of it. On the other hand, we do know something about the things that are enabling the children to learn. And the most important thing that is enabling the children to learn is the other people that are around them. All those people who are talking motherese and showing them how the world works and explaining what's going on around them, that's really the medium by which children are learning. So if we really want children to learn, what we should do is put children in rich environments where there's lots of opportunity for them to do the kind of experiments that I showed you, lots of opportunity for them to see complex things going on around them, and lots of chances for interaction with adult caregivers who um, are concerned about them, are paying attention, are implicitly teaching them the kinds of things that they need to know. And something like a library is a wonderful place for that kind of in interaction to take place. Um, that's a kind of setting in which children can be having exactly the kind of enriching experiences, exactly the opportunities for observation and experiment and interaction with other people that are the things that we can now prove scientifically allow not just children, but allow all of us to learn as much as we do about the world as quickly and as efficiently as we do about the world.